visiting Feather Park Black Hawks. Black Hawks. Dean Gold, a freshman, number zero, Luke Rubicon. Defense. South Union Township Sports Network in cooperation with the South Union Township Supervisors presents the South Union Township Sports Network live streaming today from Mustang Field, home of the Laurel Highlands High School boys soccer team as the Mustangs take on the Bethel Park Blackhawks. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Morozak with Jerry Dupain. And welcome you aboard for this evening's boys soccer game. South Union Township Sports Network coverage brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Breeze Line Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. We've got a Brian Morozak with Jerry Dupain. The starting lineups being introduced right now. I'll pass them along to you, starting first with the Bethel Park Blackhawks. Bethel Park enters this match here today looking for their first win of the season. They're 0-3 overall, 0-2 in conference play, and they'll play a 4-4-2 today with a pair of seniors, Miles Jackson and Carter Kaczynski up top. In the midfield, senior Owen Newman, sophomore Jackson Friday, junior Henry Gaston, and senior Jacob Zeminski. On the back line for the Bethel Park Blackhawks, Dylan DeClara Jr., Caden Flanagan, a senior, Nathan Usselman, a senior, and Adam Thompson, a junior. They're going to have a freshman in Luke Rubicon in goal for the Bethel Park Blackhawks. They're ducked out, and they're away whites with black numbers and a little bit of orange trim. Laurel Islands enters this match 3-1 and one overall. They have shutout wins over Uniontown, Beth Center, and Bentworth. Their lone loss came against Thomas Jefferson by a score of one to nothing here at Mustang Field last Thursday. Jerry Rogers, the head coach of the Mustangs, Doug Fink in his fifth year as the head coach of the Bethel Park Blackhawks. I'm not going to turn it over to our public address announcer, Jason Taylor, to introduce the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And now, and now the starting lineup for your, for your Laurel Highlands Mustangs. 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 Double zero, Cooper, Cooper Hunt. Hunt. At forward, a junior, number seven, Bryce Bendeshaw. A freshman forward, number eight, Cole Ratcliffe. A junior midfielder, number nine, Thatcher Wilson. In goal, a junior, number 10, Luke Simpson. A midfielder, a junior, number 14, Tim Lasick. A junior forward. Number 18, Courtney Weston. On defense, a senior, number 19, Caleb Janowski. A junior midfielder, number 20, Peyton Rulokaba. A senior midfielder. Number 25, Harry Radcliffe. And a senior defenseman, number 30, Ian Hamilton. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we would ask that you all please rise.
And we're just about set to go. The Bethel Park Blackhawks and the Laurel Highlands Mustangs for Mustang Field. I mentioned Bethel Park, a program that historically has been very strong, especially if you look at the run they had from 2011 to 2016. They made the WPIL playoffs in six straight seasons, won two section championships, fell on some hard times in 4A and actually moved down from 4A to 3A in the offseason. They opened up the season with a 3-1 loss against Peters Township in a non-conference game. Lost their conference opener 3-0 against Thomas Jefferson and lost the last time out this past Thursday against Trinity by a score of 1-0. So in three matches so far this season, Bethel Park only one goal scored so far this season. And you look at Laurel Highlands on the other hand, the Mustangs have scored 19 goals. In fact, they've outscored their opponents 19-1 to so far this season. Their only loss against Thomas Jefferson, one to nothing shutout. Thatcher Wilson has been really pacing the way for Laurel Highland so far this year. Wilson with eight goals and two assists in four games for the Mustangs so far this season. Of course, Luke Simpson has been stellar in goal as well. The Mustangs playing a 4-3-3 here again today. They did lose Ian Hamilton for the matches on Saturday. Ian picked up a pair of yellow cards in the Mustangs one Nil loss against Thomas Jefferson. And we're underway for Mustang Field Conference matchup between the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Bethel Park Blackhawks. And Laurel Highlands sends it down on the far side. And that's Thatcher Wilson trying to make hay here between a couple of defenders and got ridden down there about 25 yards from goal. But the Mustangs able to keep it alive there. Bryce Bendishaw sending it wide. Harry Radcliffe trying to track it down. And it's Caden Flanagan sending it out there for Bethel Park. Mustangs trying to go Quickly there to Courtney Weston. Goes out of play. Will be a throw in here for Bethel Park. Mentioned the Mustangs with Cole Radcliffe, Thatcher Wilson, and Courtney Weston on the front line. Bryce Bendishaw, Tim Lasick, and Harry Radcliffe in the midfield with Cooper Hunt, Caleb Yanoski, Caitlin Rulvacaba, and Ian Hamilton on the back line with junior Nick Simpson. Check that. Luke Simpson in goal for the Mustangs as Carter Kaczynski sends it down the far touch line there for Bethel Park. Trying to track it down there. Miles Jackson, a pair of senior strikers up top for Bethel Park. Jackson along with Carter Krasinski. Trying to make some hay for the Blackhawks here today. Ball went out for a goal kick, so Luke Simpson will put it down. Luke will go short. Goes through Ian Hamilton. And down on the back line. Mustangs try to send it off to midfield, but knocked down there by Jackson Friday. But Laurel Highlands trying to turn the tables with a nice run down from Cole Radcliffe. Wasn't able to track it down before it got back to the freshman keeper, Luke Rubicon. As Bethel Park resets here from their back line, Nathan Usselman sending it through the midfield. A little touch there up to Carter Kaczynski. Kaczynski going wide now on the far side. Brought in there by Caden Flanagan. Flanagan will touch forward, looking for Miles Jackson, and the Mustangs able to pick it up and pull it back to Luke Simpson. Over to Rulva Caba here on the near side. A little pressure there again from Caden Flanagan, winning it back there for Bethel Park. As the Blackhawks, Jacob Zeminski, have a Zeminski and a Kaczynski on the Bethel Park side, trying to put a little action there in front of Simpson, going wide and out. It'll be another goal kick here for Laurel Highlands. Almost two and a half minutes in. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupay. Nice to have you along with us here on the South Union Township Sports Network as we continue our high school soccer coverage this fall. Opened up bringing you a girl-boy doubleheader. Last Tuesday over at Bill Power Stadium, swept by the Mustangs over the Red Raiders. Harry Radcliffe battling hard there against Dylan DeClaire for Bethel Park. The Blackhawks have had more of the Ball here in the opening minutes. Jackson Friday having it poked out of play. He'll flip it off there to Caden Flanagan, who will send it in. Flanagan high lob, trying to go into the box there to Carter Kaczynski. Mustangs headed out, looking for possession. Knocked down there by Jacob Zeminski on the Bethel Park side. On the far line again there, Jackson Friday looking to center. Broken up there by Cooper Hunt on the Mustangs side. We'll have a throw in here again for Bethel Park. Hamilton looking for the header. It was actually won there by Henry Gaston trying to keep it alive. Hamilton able to clear. 
On the far side to Thatcher Wilson trying to set up the attack. Partially fanned. Got a little help there from Bryce Bendishaw. Back down to Wilson. And poked out in front of Mustang head coach Jerry Rogers. And Bendishaw pulling it back to Cooper Hunt. And now Bendishaw again. Battling there with Miles Jackson. Who wins it over to Carter Kaczynski who went down. Foul there on the Mustangs. Free kick for Bethel Park coming about 35 yards from goal. Mentioned the struggles as of late for Bethel Park. Of course, Laurel Highlands, they've made the WPIL playoffs six years in a row. All in 3A. Lost to a very tough Moon team. A hard luck draw in the first round last year. They fell 5-2, to two, but played a very competitive game. Here's Henry Gaston on the free kick from 35 yards out. Gaston the boot, sending it over the goal and out. Another goal kick here for the Mustangs. Certainly tell in September, getting dark much earlier. Here, just a couple minutes past 7.30. Dusk upon us already. Lights on at full strength. And a little action here in the box again on the Bethel Park side. Simpson way out there challenging the attack from Bethel Park's number 22, Henry Gaston. Mustangs knocked it out of play. It'll be Miles Jackson to trigger it back in. Have to think some urgency on the Bethel Park side as well. Coming in 0-3, 0-2 in conference play. And they'll get the first goal of the game here right in front with the header. And that was Henry Gaston. So Gaston off the header here at the 34-48 mark. Only the second goal scored all season for Bethel Park. Puts the Blackhawks on top one to nothing over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And Bethel Park, who had more of the ball than Laurel Highlands in the opening minutes, coming through with a big goal. They go on top, 1-0. And now a little pressure on the Laurel Highlands side as Cole Radcliffe trying to track one down. Goes back to Luke Rubicon, the Bethel Park keeper. And I have to think the Mustangs like to put a little pressure on Rubicon. Just being a freshman, only a handful of varsity matches under his belt so far this season. Harry Radcliffe through the midfield, trying to push it up there to Bryce Bendishaw. Now Radcliffe back on it in front of the Bethel Park bench. It'll be the Blackhawks. No, they're going to switch it here and give it to Laurel Highlands on the throw-in. Cooper Hunt will take it. Bendishaw another touch. Radcliffe trying to help out. It's Bethel Park coming back the other way. Caden Flanagan trying to come forward. Ian Hamilton clearing it back there for the Mustangs. And Laura Highland trying to go wide. Would have been close to see if Radcliffe was on sides if the ball got his way. But Bethel Park with a little break up and a nice through ball down the near wing. Trying to track it down there was Carter Kaczynski and a nice slide tackle for the Mustangs. Caleb Janoski slowing down the run. Allowing the Mustangs to get a couple of reinforcements back defensively. Throw in there from Dylan DeClaire into the box. Again, headed out by Janoski. And Bethel Park will look to reload again. And Jerry, our score hub's wrong there. You have the Mustangs with the goal, and it's actually Bethel Park on top. Try to get that edited and changed. As Cooper Hunt clears, again, a one nothing lead for Laurel High, or for Bethel Park, excuse me, not Laurel Highlands. Nonetheless, a nice run here for the Mustangs. Coming down, Thatcher Wilson trying to cross out in front. Wilson went down. No whistle. It will be a corner kick here for the Mustangs. Mustangs sent it into the box. Went right to the freshman keeper, Rubicon. Gave up the rebound and again cleared out of play. There's Cooper Hunt looking for the cross. And out the top of the box, shot blocked down. And a good attempt there. That was actually Courtney Weston that took it. And look out here, Bethel Park breaking back. Getting into the box and a break up there from Yanoski on the rundown from Miles Jackson. We have Bethel Park corner kick. And 
in Bethel Park. A 1-0 lead over Laurel Highlands. Our graphic is wrong. We'll get a fix for you here momentarily. I'm taking the corner here from the near side. Go a little high here on the lob. Back post. Mustangs looking to clear, and that one sent high in the air by Rulva Caba. And out here on the near side. Dylan DeClaire to take the throw in. Reloads top of the box, and that one sent high and wide here on the near side by Miles Jackson. The Mustangs will take the goal kick. Luke Simpson to send it down on the far side. Over to Gaston. And the Mustangs getting possession there with Cooper Hunt. On the far boundary to Bendishaw. And deflected out. will be a free kick here for the Mustangs. I'm going to go wide here on the near side. Yanoski from his own zone down the far wing. Run from Thatcher Wilson into the box. Wilson able to cross. Good break up there from Bethel Park defensively. Wilson takes the throw in into Tim Lasick. A little backside pressure there from Owen Newman. And deflected out. And number there, Jerry's incorrect that you gave me. Yeah, free kick here for Bethel Park. Sent down the far side. Had some good runs from both Jackson and Kaczynski up top so far in this match. They're trying to break back there. Bryce Bendishaw. Off of Laurel Highlands and out. And Caden Flanagan takes the throw in here for Bethel Park. A little header there from Harry Radcliffe. They're sending this one down, looking for Cole Radcliffe. A lot of his range. Trying to get a ball here. It'll be Bethel Parks throwing. Dylan DeClaire to take it. And another good run. Down the near boundary here from Carter Kaczynski. Kaczynski getting around Rulva Cobb, a little center and a poke. Sent high and out of play. Another little blast just going wide there of Simpson. And yeah, we've seen a lot of action on Simpson here early on. And apologize, working on a few... Uh, Technical issues trying to get into our score hub. Quick whistle here. What do we got?
And we do have the score now correct on your screen. one nothing lead for Bethel Park over Laurel Highlands. Bethel Park looking for more. There's Henry Gaston trying to go wide. Actually deflected off of Radcliffe. Blackhawks trying to keep possession. Good little fight here on the near side. Knocked down by Cody Hendrick Abondra who had just checked in on the Bethel Park side. Now back to Dylan DeClaire. DeClaire pressured there by Tim Lasick. And now Bondra again. They're back to the top of the box. Partially broken up there by Bendishaw. Kept alive by Xavier Jackson. And a lot of good possession time here for Bethel Park. And there's a chip one off the crossbar on that shot attempt from Jackson. He whistled down, actually ping-ponged off the football crossbar as well. So it'll be a goal kick here for the Mustangs. Bethel Park putting all kinds of action here on Laurel Highlands in the opening minutes. Cooper Hunt from his own zone. Down the far side looking for Thatcher Wilson who Bethel Park's hemmed in well here early on. Mustangs unable to make a run there through the midfield but off a of deflection Radcliffe found it was looking for his brother. That was Harry looking for Cole. And got broken up again this time by Adam Thompson. Thompson, good little play there over to Gaston. He's looking on the front line for Miles Jackson when through Jackson and out of play. Another goal kick here for Simpson and the Mustangs. Simpson down the far side, unable to knock it down. There was Bendisha. Out of play and back to Bethel Park again. Caden Flanagan. On a quick work in, looking there for Jackson. Bendishaw finding it again for the Mustangs. Touch from Rova Kaba. Body down on the far boundary there from Caden Flanagan. The ball clutching and grabbing there on both sides. We're going to foul here on the Mustangs. Free kick taken here by Adam Thompson. Thompson on a nice lob. That one right to Simpson. And Simpson, a lot of traffic there with Henry Gaston right on the doorstep. Mustangs look to counter Cole Radcliffe. And good defense there from Jacob Zeminski, keeping it alive. Low ball, a little sidewinder there on Simpson, who's able to make the save. So Bethel Parks probably had 65 to 70% possession time so far in this match. Xavier Jackson having it knocked out of play there by Bryce Bendisha. And sent back in there to Simpson. Oh, check that. Sent back into Miles Jackson. He was looking in the corner there for Bondra. One out of play. Another Mustang goal kick. I'm going to send back to Luke Simpson. Simpson from his own zone. Trying to get back in Cole Radcliffe's direction. Bethel Park, another knockdown. A reset on that back sign with Caden Flanagan. Down again to Xavier Jackson in traffic. Harry Radcliffe sending it the other way to Thatcher Wilson. Wilson on the break. Wilson down the far wing. Just couldn't hang on. Good run. Just kind of lost the dribble on the break down the far side for Laurel Highlands. Goes back to the freshman Luke Rubicon. And skies it in the air. And a lot of play on the far side. Change here on the Laurel Highlands side. Bendishaw coming out. Looks like Ryan Rockwell entering the match for the first time for the Mustangs. And Bethel Park challenging Simpson, and they get their second goal of the match. Shot taken from about 40 yards out. And I think that was Caden Flanagan that took it. 
number 12. Either Flanagan or 22, Gaston. They're patting actually Gaston on the back. So it was Gaston on the goal. Thank you very much. And a 2-0 lead now for Bethel Park over Laurel Highlands. Again, Bethel Park who came into this match. Only two goals sco scored so far this season. I took that one goal scored so far this season coming into the match. I have two already here today. 21-29 left here in the first half. Laurel Highlands trying to turn it around. Harry Radcliffe, low shot. Got blocked there by Usselman. And Bethel Park looking for more here on the counter. Yanoski running into Gaston and it's played back to Simpson. Henry, Henry, certainly a tough start for Laurel Highlands. Coming in 3-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in conference play. And high hopes for getting a win here tonight, but still a lot of soccer to play. Only midway through this first half. And find themselves down two on the scoreboard. We got a free kick coming back. Harry Radcliffe will leave it down here for Ian Hamilton. And Hamilton taking the boot from his own zone. Radcliffe, that was Harry with a little knockdown. Cole trying to catch up to it. And Tim Lasik was in the play, but gets deflected off to Carter Kaczynski. Touch there from Bondra. And Mustangs Hamilton with a blast back. Trying to find Thatcher Wilson. So Gaston getting both goals here for Bethel Park. Scored the first at the 34-48 mark. And adding the second about 18 minutes in. You have 19.30 left in the first half right now. Not sure where that fourth quarter is coming from that you might see on your score hub, but we're in the first half. Here's LASIK breaking back for the Mustangs. Touch there from Radcliffe. Sent down. Again, looking for Thatcher Wilson. Mustangs really have not pressured Luke Rubicon much in this match. Ethel Park is really limited in the Mustangs scoring opportunities. Bondra again on the near side, trying to send it off to his right. On last touch by Rubacaba going out. And Bondra will try to go quickly here. I think so. And a couple of changes now on the Bethel Park side. I mean, Lucas Varley to take this throw in. Varley into the box and loose on the back post. And Simpson, a nice save there on four. Shaw might have been offsides. Was offsides. Wouldn't have counted anyways. Still more pressure on Luke Simpson. Mustang surrendering two here in the opening 20. Now for a blast here back to center. Cole Radcliffe couldn't knock it down. Here's DeClaire, a little touchback. And Harry Radcliffe on it, has his jersey and arm being grabbed. We play on. And Harry sending it over the closest man, Courtney Weston. And back again to the keeper, Rubicon. Luke again back to the midfield, headed along there by Bondra. Looking to spring Lucas Varley. And turned back around here by Caleb Yanoski for Laurel Highlands. Yanoski, nice little run down the far side, settling it off to Cooper Hunt. Down the far boundary. 
Touchdown there by Caden Flanagan. Touch from Forrest Shaw. Now to play on the far side is Xavier Jackson. Couldn't keep possession. And Ian Hamilton will flip it off to Cooper Hunt on the Mustang throw in. As Tim Lasick will check out. And Tanner Bruzda will enter the match here on the Mustang side. Cooper Hunt over to Radcliffe. That was Harry. Bruised a touch. Harry again. Triple teamed. Bruised a trying to come over to help. And play a whistle down again, and we're going to get a foul here against the Mustangs. A free kick coming back for Bethel Park. Nathan Usselman to take it. Usselman from about... 52 yards from goal, and now they'll switch back here in Caden Flanagan. And now Adam Thompson, and it's Thompson that takes it. Thompson with a nice little blast, looking for a deflection here on the near post. Goes out of play and ruled here off of Bethel Park going out. Maybe not. No, ruled off of Laurel Highlands going out. So it'll be a corner. Guys started making their way back on the other side of the field. The Cody Bondra. To take the corner kick. The binder puts it down. A little line drive into the back of the net. I don't even think that one was touched. Bondra scoring from the corner. And I don't think a Bethel Park player even deflected it. And a lead now at three to nothing. The Bethel Park coming to play tonight. Goal at the 15-34 mark of the first half. So Gaston with a brace. Bondra adding one. And Bethel Park a 3-0 lead now over Laurel Highlands. 15-25. Left here in the first half. See assistant coach Jerry Rogers Jr. scratching his head. And that's what the Mustangs are doing right now. Trying to. Figure out this Bethel Park team. Mustangs look stunned. It's been Bethel Park controlling the ball and controlling this game so far. And did confirm Bondra on the goal. So Cody Hendrick Bondra getting his first to the match. We saw one of those Scored clean, I think it was by Ian Hamilton. Last Tuesday in that match against Uniontown. Don't see the clean corners scored very often. But here, this is our third broadcast of the year on the South Union Township Sports Network as far as soccer is concerned. And seeing two of those already. Xavier Jackson. To his left there to Owen Newman. Low ball scooped up there by Simpson. And again, Simpson entered this match just stellar. One goal given up in four matches. He's given up three here already in the opening 26 minutes of play. Header there from Adam Thompson in an open space. Xavier Jackson trying to track it down. Cooper Hunt there on the Laurel Highlands side. Jackson on his horse down the far boundary. And Ian Hamilton just taking the safe route, setting it out. Allowing the Mustangs to... Reset a little bit here defensively. And Lucas Varley to take this throw in. Now Varley sends it in. A little header there from Hamilton. Radcliffe Harry trying to help out. And the ball sent a little wide there from Jacob Zeminski. Mustangs make another change. Looks like LASIK back in. I check that Bendishaw back in. A Bendishaw and LASIK back in, they're telling me. Matcher Wilson getting a little break on the Laurel Highland Sun. Mustangs go short now to Yanoski. Over to Rulva Kaba on the near boundary. Again, Bethel Park all over the ball with another intercept. Stepping in there was Owen Newman. Laurel Highlands trying to up the pressure. We'll get a foul called here on the backside. 
And it was Bendishaw. Went over the back of Flanagan. Setting up the free kick here for Bethel with 12.25 tw with, uh, left in the first half. Two from Gaston, one from Bondra. And a lead of three to nothing for Bethel Park over Laurel Highlands. Another lob into the box. Look out here. Simpson with traffic out in front. Played back on the far side, Owen Newman. Harry Radcliffe stepping in. And to go around Newman. Newman keeping it alive. Tiptoe on that far boundary. Hamilton stepping in. But Bethel Park still with it. Partial fan there on the shot from Jacob Zeminski. Another little lob back going over the goal and out for a Mustang goal kick. Now three changes here on the Bethel Park side. And 11.44 left here in the first half. Our coverage here on the South Union Township Sports Network being brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor. Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specials, SWGI in Uniontown. Dr. Calabres, Ruth Hart, Stokes, and Hoppy. Zebley Mahal of Illinois, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff, Bauer, Rick Fernand, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza. And the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Team Boosters. That one going back to Luke Rubicon again. Rubicon, another blast back to center. Lasa getting a touch there for Laurel Highlands. Trying to get it forward there to Bendishaw. Went down, able to regain. Looking for a poke down on the far wing there to Ryan Rockwell. Never got his way. Bethel Park going back the other way with Miles Jackson. A little pullback there to Carter Kaczynski. Lob back on the near side. Body down by Harry Radcliffe. Lob back to his brother Cole, plays on sides. Cole knocks it down, trying to come forward. Double teamed, went down, no foul call, and we play on. Brother Harry steps in. Ball rolls out here on the near side, rolled in Bethel Park's direction. And headed there down the near boundary by Bondra. Back through the midfield there, Zeminski. Touchdown by Gaston. Over on the far side, Xavier Jackson. Resetting there, Miles Jackson. A little contact with Ian Hamilton. Ball going out off of Ian and out, or was it? It was, but we have substitutions. It's a little delay here. A little throw back for Miles Jackson again. Now Thatcher Wilson back in. This time replacing Harry Radcliffe. As Miles Jackson with the lobby and Hamilton with the header. Goes back on the far side to Jackson again. Jackson, a little line drive, deflection out in front. Just sent wide there again for, from Bondra, looking for his second of the game. And then you already have two from Henry Gaston. A one from Bondra on the Mustangs. Finding themselves down three here as we go under nine minutes left in the first half. And Luke Simpson lobs it out here on the near side in the direction of Tanner Bruzda. And one again by Bethel Park. Pulled back to Owen Newman. Reset back to their freshman keeper, Luke Rubicon. Rubicon down the field. Knocked down there by Lasik. There's Juan back there from Gaston. But Thatcher Wilson back into the match trying to free up Ryan Rockwell. And they have Wilson back in Harry Radcliffe's normal midfield position right now with Harry getting a breather. As Dylan DeClaire, Mustang saying it was out. Now DeClaire goes down. I think we'll get a throw in here for Laurel Highlands. And they're going to give DeClaire a minute here and get back to his feet. Kind of went down late. Talking to teammate Henry Gaston. And Rovacaba plays hacky sack with it, waiting for resumption. Hey, 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 
Now DeClaire will jog over to the far side. He'll get subbed out. And Bethel Park will juggle things around a little bit. You're going to have Carson Yemen checking in. Carter Kaczynski. Over to Yemen. Mustangs trying to win it back. It's going to be a foul on the push down there for Miles Jackson. Initiating the contact. Mustangs trying to go quickly. That was blocked. I think a quick step in. Now will get a card. Issued here to Jackson. Came back within 10 yards of the kick and knocked it down. You can't do that. So Jackson will have to sit for five. Yellow card caution issued at the 724 mark of the first half. So Jackson goes in the books. Mention the Mustangs. Ian Hamilton picked up a double yellow against Thomas Jefferson last Thursday. He's able to serve his match penalty on Saturday. Mustangs won winning two non-conference games in the coaches tournament on Saturday. Defeating Beth Center and Bentworth. Stepping in there, and another quick whistle. Foul going here on the Mustangs. And 6.50 left before halftime. Owen Newman take this free kick. And Newman sends it along. Mustangs trying to work it out of the zone. And there is Thatcher Wilson. Big collision with Cody Bondra. Ball springs free. Picked up there by Jackson Friday. A little line drive deflected wide here on the near side. It'll go out of play. And it might be a corner kick here. I think the Mustangs are the last to touch it off the deflection. Ladies and gentlemen, check your tickets. A red ticket for the 50-50. Red ticket number three. It'll be a corner here for Cody Bondra. 0-9-5-8. 364-0958. So Bondra to take it. This time going high and all the way through the box. And Bethel Park having success on those corners. And they're going to rule that one was last touched by Laurel Highlands going out. We'll get another corner this time from the backside from Bondra. And Bondra reloads. Going high and out. Send that behind the goal from the far corner. Go back to Luke Simpson again for the goal kick. Mustangs are certainly confident coming in. Only common opponent so far this season was Thomas Jefferson. Mustangs lost 1-0, while Bethel Park lost 3-0 to, to TJ. Our Highland just looking for one here to get back into the match. And they really have not challenged Luke Rubicon at all in the match. You can't get him back to the keeper. You're not going to be able to score. Bethel Park's controlled possession. They've controlled the attack. And they're up 3 to nothing on the scoreboard. One of four conference games going on tonight. Albert Gallatin at Trinity. Connellsville at Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson in the WPIL top five right now, according to the Triple I High School Sports Network. And Ringgold also in Fayette County. They're taking on Uniontown this evening. Other games around the region. Odd not to have Bell Vernon and Laurel Highlands in the same soccer conference. Leps down in 2A this year. They're at Waynesburg tonight. Brownsville at Mount Pleasant. McGuffey at Washington and South Moreland at Yak. 
Down in single lane, Bentworth at Geibel, Beth Center at Chalaroy, Ligonier Valley at Greensburg Central Catholic. There's new enrollment numbers coming out. And a lot of the charter kids just counting for a percentage of one student that really aided Bethel Park in the, or check that, uh, Bell Vernon in the drop of classifications. Also, help Bethel Park too. They were a 4A soccer program last year, moved down to 3A in the offseason. 318 left here in the first half. Cole Radcliffe to take this throw in. Over to Brother Harry. Back to Cole. And one off the ball there by Carter Kaczynski. Cole able to get it back. Trying to go wide on the far side. Again deflected back to center. Laurel Highlands just has not been able to muster any kind of attack in the Bethel Park zone so far tonight. Rubicon will take some time here. Dribbling it out to the top of the 18 before a high boot back to center. In traffic, Thatcher Wilson. Playing it back to Ian Hamilton. Trying to angle it wide. Pass intercepted. Look out here. Odd man break. Coming back for Bethel Park. Hamilton stepped in to break it up. No whistle. Clean play. Just ruled out off of Hamilton. Will be a corner kick, but no foul called. The Mustangs fortunate there. Again, we mentioned Bethel Park has not made the WPIL playoffs since 2016. Maybe they did call. They did call the foul. They played the advantage, let it go through. So at least they let that one play out. It did not hear the whistle. They're going to reset it back to the point of the foul. And Zeminski will take the free kick about 21 yards from goal. With 145 left on our running clock here in the first half. Has been a quick-moving game, but the Mustangs down three on the scoreboard. Play whistled back in and tipped just over the bar. And a shot from Zeminski. He'll set up another corner here for Bethel Park as we go under 90 seconds left here in the first half. Bondra to take another corner. Bondra going high. And all the way through. And able to track it down there was... Actually, have two number 11s on my roster. Carmen Yemen and Joshua Woodman. We'll have to get some clarification there as who is wearing 11 tonight. Get that at halftime. Blackhawks knock it down again. And angled back and... Through there from Gaston and out of play. Mustangs will try to go quickly. 35 seconds left before halftime. Going through Thatcher Wilson. Now Thatcher stepping in. Looking for a little help. Good ball down on the far side. Cole Radcliffe trying to catch up to it. A little collision. Ball comes loose. Cole's free. Chips it towards the goal. It just stopped at the near post by a diving defender. For Bethel Park coming over. Nathan Usselman maybe taking a goal away there from Cole Radcliffe. We're down to six. We're down to five. Mustangs with a quick corner. Again, set out, and that'll do it for the first half. So finally, a little surge there in the final 30 seconds from Laurel Highlands. But Bethel Park, a solid first half. And the Bethel Park Blackhawks, a 3-0 lead over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs here at halftime. We're back to recap the first half scoring for you in a moment here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Mustang Boys Soccer Team and the coaches from the LH Boys Soccer Team Boosters.
good luck to the Law Hines Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. to the Laurel Hines Mustang Boys Soccer Team and their coaches from the LH Boys Soccer Team Boosters. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs of Uniontown. We'd like to wish the Law Hines Boys soccer team and their coaches on having a successful soccer season this year. Dr. Fraser Stokes, did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation, and there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalab, and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalab, and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Back here at Mustang Field, Laurel Highlands trailing Bethel Park 3-0 here at halftime. A pair of goals from Henry Gaston. Gaston got the scoring started at the 34-48 mark of the first half and then added a long one with about 
22 minutes left before halftime, 18 minutes into the match to make it 2 to nothing. Cody Bondra scoring off of a direct corner kick at the 1534 mark to make it 3 to nothing. Miles Jackson was issued a yellow card at the 724 mark of the first half to cap off the first half scoring. I'd like to let you know that our broadcast here on the South Union Township Sports Network brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Dr. Calabrese, Ruth Hart, Stokes, and Hoppy. Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Chessler's Fine Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza, and the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Boosters. Thank all of those fine companies for sponsoring our broadcast. And if you're watching this game on Breeze Line or Armstrong Cable, I'd like to let you know that South Union Township Sports Network games and programs are now available live online. It's easy to find. Just log on to YouTube.com and search South Union Television or follow the South Union Township Sports Network on Facebook for program updates. It's Facebook.com slash South Union TV. You can also subscribe for notifications anytime we go live. 3 nothing Bethel Park over Laurel Highlands here at the break. Second half match action comes your way next here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not... Are you tired of looking at the same old furniture day in and day out? Let Chesler's Fine Furniture work their magic. Chesler's offers the finest in name brand home furnishings by famous manufacturers. Plus, accent pieces that underline your unique sense of style. And they are all sale priced. There are living room suits by King Hickory, Lancer, Craftmaster, Lazy Boy, and Best Chair. Each offering a distinct flair of comfort and design in many styles and fabrics. The largest selection of metal dinettes by Douglas. And dining sets in your choice of finishes and woods. Chesler's has exceptional bedding by White Dove and Imperial in your choice of size and firmness. Chesler's Fine Furniture also offers genuine Lazy Boy recliners and living room suits for pure relaxing comfort. In addition, you can count on Chesler's for friendly, courteous service, delivery, and layaway. Credit terms are available with up to six months the same as cat. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad because people are busy these days at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service. From a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank at your service. Bethel Park trying to add to their solid attack from the front. Into the box here. Body down and poked by Jackson Friday. Players with the touch.
Andy Simpson with a goal kick. And blast it back to center. Mustangs looking for a little ball control. Certainly lacked that in the first half. Courtney Weston was there. He'll poke down the far boundary, deflect it out off of Bethel Park. Mustangs trying to go quickly. A good little run there from Cole Radcliffe. Cole looking for the cross. This block coming across by Jacob Zeminski. Be a corner kick here for the Mustangs. We'll trot Harry Radcliffe over to take it. Two minutes in the second half. Mustangs really have not tested freshman keeper Luke Rubicon yet. Harry takes the corner, goes up top. Bendishaw was knocked off the ball and goes over to Cooper Hunt. On a little lob, trying to go cross field on the far side. Battling Bendishaw, Weston a touch. Harry Radcliffe giving a little help. Well, give and go back there with Weston. Never got his way. Broken up by Dylan DeClaire. Comes down the far boundary. A little slide tackle coming back on the Mustang side. From Weston breaking it up. DeClaire takes the throw in. And over to Owen Newman. Said back up to Miles Jackson. Headed up the field looking for Tim Lasick. West in another touch. A one off again by Zeminski. Jacob Zeminski circling it back off to Owen Newman. Bethel Park on their defensive line as Usselman and Flanagan play catch. There's Jackson Friday. We did get confirmation at halftime that's Joshua Woodman wearing number 11. And two 11s on our roster. And coming back here for Laurel Highlands. Opportunity out in front. Thatcher Wilson a rob there by Rubicon. So Wilson, who entered the match for Laurel Highlands, eight goals and two assists. Really his first good scoring opportunity of the match. And the freshman keeper Rubicon up to the test. Jackson Friday on the lob. Over to Miles Jackson, who had that yellow card in the first half. Back on the ball here. A little low ball for the top of the 18. Play whistled down. We had a foul here on the Bethel Park side. We have a free kick for the Mustangs. It's actually up the Bethel Park way yesterday. They had a dog swim on Labor Day at the South Park Wave Pool. And my Labradoodle Murray down there. Stature Wilson, a little pressure there again on Rubicon. Had a fun time. I actually dodged the weather. Had Rain down here most of the day yesterday, but about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, cleared up, and Murray got a good hour plus dog swimming. There's Flanagan. Going to push it forward on the back line to Cooper Hunts. Reset to Simpson again. Push it up the field, looking for Bendishaw. And the Mustangs just lacking organization to get possession tonight. And that's going to be a foul on Hamilton. I thought it should have been. So just playing the advantage here, letting it play out. Bethel Park still having possession with Jackson Friday. He's looking there for Zeminski. And push forward on Bethel Park. Taking the safe round here back to Rubicon. Weston on the far side trying to add a little pressure there for the Mustangs along with Bryce Bendishaw. Once again, the Blackhawks control. Back through center. Good boot there from Caden Flanagan. Trying to get off the field. Looking for Miles Jackson. Rubacaba there for the Mustangs winning it back. Down to Cole Radcliffe down the far wing. And Cole getting knocked down by Adam Thompson. No foul call. Referee's letting them play here today. It'll be a throw in for the Mustangs. They'll jog Courtney Weston down to take it. Weston on the lob, looking for Harry Radcliffe. Radcliffe trying to win it down in the box. Getting cleared back. Caleb Yanoski there for Laurel Highlands. Got to look out, and it's a two on one coming back. Hamilton, the lone man back there for the Mustangs. 
Pass comes over here wide from about 25 yards, set in the back of the net by Carter Kaczynski. And it's a 4-0 lead. To the Mustangs, pinching in a little bit. Yanoski turned it over, set up the two-on-one, and Kaczynski made him pay. So all Bethel Park. Goal coming here at the 33-47 mark of the second half. Really can't fault the Mustangs, and although for pinching, you're down 3-0 in the match. You have to play aggressive and try to find a way back. That time with the turnover just on the edge of the zone. Set up a great rush. I've been very impressed, too, with Bethel Park's long-distance shooting. I've seen the Gaston goal in the first half from long range. That was his second, about the 22-minute mark. And then Kaczynski there taking one. Of course, you had Bondra scoring right off the corner. Gaston's first was on a header out in front. And now, ah, turnover there for Simpson. It's been that kind of night for Laurel Highlands. Simpson, which should have been a routine play, just juggled it out of play, setting up a corner kick here for Bethel Park on the far side. And Jacob Zeminski will take it. Zeminski with the lob and a crashing header attempt from the near side from Caden Flanagan, and you're going to get a foul there called on the Mustangs as you had Thatcher Wilson knock down Adam Thompson. Wilson not booked. It will be a free kick. Let's we'll see how much frustration comes out of Laurel Highlands. To Thompson to take the free kick, 26 yards out. Put it off the corner where the post meets the crossbar. Came very close to making it 5 0. There's Hunt. A little touch coming forward there from Tim Lasick. Hunt going low. On back here by Owen Newman. Newman with Hunt making a little contact here. Edge of the box. It's going to be a penalty kicker just outside. Boy, that was tight. Might be just outside the box. You have that black line against that blue end zone turf. About a yard outside the 18-yard box. So the Mustangs set the wall up. Zeminski, though, is going to pull it back. About 25 yards out. That one got a little away there from Usselman. We'll go the other way. Free kick for the Mustangs. So 30-55 left here in the second half. Laurel Highlands down four goals. And Jackson close to a steal there on... Cooper Hunt. And a good boot there from Yanoski. Trying to spring Thatcher Wilson down the near wing. And Caden Flanagan taking the safe route, sending it out. And Tim Lasick will take this throw in. Lasick pulling it back to Hunt. And now Hamilton, Harry Radcliffe, circling to his left. And the Mustangs unable to keep possession here in the Bethel Park zone. Jackson Friday, pocket pick there by Thatcher Wilson, and Wilson couldn't stay on the ball. Friday, another touch. A little pressure from the Mustangs here in the near boundary. A little settle off from Zeminski. 
to his left. Good ball from Newman. Going to come down the far side. Mustangs get a little deflection back. That one going out of play on the intended pass for Harry Gaston on the near side. Cooper Hunt to take the throw in. Into LASIK, back to Hunt, now Hamilton again. Hamilton, a little block there from Jackson. And Miles Jackson breaking back here for Bethel Park. Jackson, low shot, just going wide. Very close to making it five to nothing. And boys, Bethel Park buzzing tonight. After some less than stellar displays earlier on in the season. Bethel Park by far playing their best game of the year tonight. They lost a rival Peters Township in their opener 3-1. to one. A pair of conference losses against Thomas Jefferson and Trinity. You wonder from a tactical standpoint, you mentioned Bethel Park played last year in 4A. If it's much of an adjustment just not knowing these teams as well. And there's Cole Radcliffe, the freshman for Laurel Highlands with a little rush. And there's contact in the box. Is that going to be a penalty kick? Dylan DeClaire. Came over and made a little contact there with Cole, and I think we're going to get a Mustang penalty kick. Let's wait and see where it was whistled down at. No, they're going to say just outside the box. Wow. Just outside the 18-yard box, and boy, that was close. So Cole Radcliffe showing good hustle. I thought initially it was inside the box. Officials did not feel the same way about it. So Harry Radcliffe here will take the free kick for the Mustangs. From about 18 and a half yards out. Harry on the boot, sent it high. Just too much juice on that for Harry. I'd like to see that replay again as far as where the initial contact was made. Because Colt did a nice job down on that far side on the rush in. And the only thing about this field, this turf, just in its second year, was installed before the season. Last year, you have those black lines on the green turf, which make it a little bit harder to see, especially at night, than if you had the yellow lines on the turf. You wonder from an official standpoint, sometimes it's tougher for them to notice the exact point where some of those infractions occur, especially when you have those close calls. This certainly has to give Bethel Park a Jump in their step. I mentioned really a must-win game for them. Coming in 0-3 overall, 0-2 in conference play. In control here, Thomas Jefferson and Connellsville both 2-0 in the conference. A little lob here back into the box. Juggled there by Simpson, able to regain and hold on. So you have TJ and Connellsville early on at 2-0. Laurel Highlands, Trinity, and Ringgold at 1-1. Albert Gallatin and Uniontown at 0-1. And then Bethel Park at 0-2. Top four make the playoffs in an 18 conference. Three A's loaded this year. There's Jackson again, top of the box. A little settle back. Pooch going high and wide here on the near side. Bethel Park last year finished in fifth place in their conference, playing up in 4A. You talk about some heavyweights. Peters Township, Cannon Mac, Mount Lebanon, Upper St. Clair all finishing above Bethel Park in that conference. Certainly an opportunity now for the Blackhawks now playing down in 3A as Jackson trying to little pull back there for Lucas Varley. Never got his way and now a whistle. And get an infraction here on the Mustangs. And a free kick again for Bethel Park. Now 26 yards out. Adam Thompson will put it down. Thompson a little ponytail on the front there. Interesting hairstyle for Adam. Line drive. Went off the wall and Simpson able to hang on. Almost on the goal line. Looking for a quick clear out as Tim Lasik trying to track it down there for Laurel Highlands. Ball going out of play here in the near side off of Bethel Park and out. Cooper Hunt to take the throw in. That one went off of Courtney Weston. Harry Radcliffe down. That's not good. Harry grabbing 
His ankle down there for the Mustangs. And his shin as well. Slow in getting up. Harry trying to put some pressure on. Also kicks and punts for the Laurel Highlands football team. And he got drilled pretty good on Friday night as well at Bell Vernon. After a little juggle off of a punt. Got run over by a Bell Vernon defender. Was able to hop to his feet. And now limping off here. Don't want to see that if you're a Mustang fan. Hopefully Harry's okay. His family sitting right below us. High atop Mustang Field. Rolled back here to Simpson. And played back to center. 24-11. Left here in regulation time. Mustangs down 4-0. At the park looking for more. It's a pretty good run there from Henry Gaston. Got the flected out. Lucas Varley to take the throw in. So Varley sends it into the box and off the throw and right to Simpson. Can't score from the throw. And Simpson able to glove it down and blast it back. Because Laurel Highlands last year finished in a log jam in Section 3 and 3A. Mustangs had a great opportunity when the conference outright had a couple of collapses down the stretch. Thomas Jefferson won the conference 11-1 and 2. Mustangs finished 11 and 3 in a second place tie with Bell Vernon, who got the better playoff seating. Trinity picked up the final playoff spot at 9-3 and 2. But the Mustangs controlled their own destiny late in the season. Just had some tough losses down the stretch which really prevented them from winning the conference and getting a potential WPIL home game and a better seed. They actually had a stretch of games, two big losses against Thomas Jefferson and Trinity late in the year. We are actually talking about this off the air as that one gets played back to the freshman keeper Rubicon. So you had a week where Laurel Highland started with a home game against Thomas Jefferson and traveled to University High, which was an Odd scheduled game in the middle of a week that featured a couple of conference games. And then the Mustangs had to play Trinity after just a day rest after playing TJ and University High on back-to-back -back days were absolutely gassed on a Saturday afternoon and lost there 2 to nothing. So you schedule a non-conference game between two big conference games and you end up dropping both conference games. You won the non-conference game, which essentially meant nothing but the Thomas Jefferson and Trinity game. Constable Laurel Highlands with an opportunity to win the conference. And I was absolutely floored to see the Mustangs did the exact same thing this year next week with games against Connellsville and Albert Gallatin. I just don't get it. Why schedule a non-conference game right before two conference games? You have Connellsville and AG on the schedule next week. Big conference games and University High on the docket on Monday. Makes absolutely no sense. Why tire your kids out on a Monday when you got conference games that are really more important on Tuesday and Thursday, and you look at almost any other level of soccer, you rarely see teams play more than two, go two games in a week. And then to set yourself up to just get your guys fatigued early on, and look out here, it's Jackson on the break, sidestep Simpson, and makes it 5-0. Another great performance from Miles Jackson and the Bethel Park Blackhawks. Five unanswered. And the Mustangs in trouble here today. First for Jackson. And the Mustangs look so solid early on in the season. We saw them against Uniontown last Tuesday, and then even in the loss to Thomas Jefferson, played a solid game. Fell won nothing in that contest. But you look at Thomas Jefferson, one of the top teams in 3A, nothing to be ashamed of there. And then won a pair of non-conference games on Saturday as well. LASIK fell down. Ball comes loose. Mustangs all out of sorts right now. And you got to watch 
the physical play. Don't want to get into a situation here where you might pick up a card. And again, Hamilton already coming off a double yellow against TJ on Thursday. Had to sit out over the weekend. No card issued in this situation. Just a free kick here for Adam Thompson. A Thompson solid boots. And right back to Luke Simpson. Mentioned 3A boys, plum number one, moon number two. Of course, moon with that playoff win over Laurel Highlands last year. Kiski area three, Thomas Jefferson four, and Hampton five. Of course, you'll have Kiski and Laurel Highlands meeting in high school football here on Friday, 7 o'clock kickoff. How about the Laurel Highlands girls? They've yet to lose a match so far this season. Wins over Uniontown. Bell Vernon, I think that was their first win over Bell Vernon in about 17 years. And then knocked off Brownsville and Bentworth this past weekend as well. They're in action actually having their senior day game a little bit early tomorrow. It's their lone game this week. Tomorrow at 7.30 here at Mustang Field. They'll travel to Thomas Jefferson next week and then host Elizabeth Forward here next Wednesday. I think we'll have the EF match for you here on the network. Now we're going out here on the near sun. 19-22 left here in regulation. And the Mustangs do have another conference game coming up later on this week. Thursday on the road at Ringgold. That'll be a 7.30 start. We mentioned the busy schedule next week here against University High on Monday. And then conference games against Connellsville and Albert Gallatin on Tuesday and Thursday. The following week, they'll travel to Trinity on Monday. Then you'll have a boy-girl doubleheader on the 22nd. Actually, Tuesday, excuse me. You'll have the Trinity game coming up on Tuesday and then the doubleheader on Thursday and the 22nd against Union Town. Good to have the boys and girls play on the same night against your crosstown rival. Sure, we'll have those matches for you as well here on the network. Play was whistled down before the shot there from Bendisha. The return matchup between these two teams, September 29th at Bethel Park. Only two more non-conference games on the schedule for the Mustangs. Mentioned Monday's University High game, and then kind of a similar situation. In October, the Mustangs scheduling Charleroi for a non-conference game on Monday. In a week, they have conference games against Ringgold and Connellsville. Just surprised those non-conference games aren't put on a Saturday or maybe after the conference slate. Just think it really affects the team's stamina. And like I said, we saw that last year against Trinity. And if you had the University High game sandwiched in. Throw in here for Flanagan. Played back over to Timothy Jones, and you might see some subs here on both sides late with a 5 nothing score up on the board. We certainly didn't expect this here tonight. We thought things would be more competitive between these two teams. If anything, I think it was easy to say Laurel Highlands might be the favorite coming in. Look at their run of form to start the season. And Bethel Park being in a little bit of a rut. They've certainly gotten out of the rut and then some here tonight. One of the new entries for Laurel Highlands, Dominic Giorgiani. Out on the field. You know, had Timothy Jones out on the Bethel Park sign. So Georgiana and Jones... Seeing some action. A couple of folks from Bethel Park checking in on our live stream. Emmy Yemen and Christopher James. Appreciate you guys watching. Bobby Rajiri and James Hersick also saying hello. Thank everyone for tuning in here tonight. 
Again, we'll have Mustang soccer action throughout the fall for you here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Plenty of games next week as another break coming down here on sides. Joshua Woodman trying to play it back and broken up there by Cooper Hunt. Another line drive and block there for the Mustang. Sean Maggart just checked in. There's Georgiana as well. And goes back to Luke Simpson. Right here's the fan of Laura Highland Sports in general. Next week there'll be a home game for either boys or girls soccer or football every night next week. Boys soccer games on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Girls in action against EF on Wednesday. And then the football game next week against McKeesport. So five games in five days here at the stadium next week. Good opportunity for you to come on out and support the Laurel Highlands athletic teams. Harry Radcliffe sending it down. And booted out of play. Thatcher Wilson over to Harry. Ryan Rockwell now on the top of the 18. At this point of the match, we're down five, but still get a goal or two here late. Just from a confidence standpoint, try to get a little jump back in your step. In a trip coming up to Ringgold on Thursday. Great to see the, as we mentioned earlier, the amount of success the Laurel Highlands girls have had so far this season as well. I know they're very proud about that win, and they should be. Down at Bell Vernon, that was a conference game for the girls. And again, the first time, I think, since either... 04 05. They knocked off Bell Vernon. Have a throw in here for Cole Radcliffe. Cooper Hunt checking out. Ruba Kaba checking back in. And Cole unable to. Keep it in play here on the near side. Final 13-24. Mustang, Mustang cheerleaders here tonight as well. Good to see them out supporting the soccer team on a Tuesday night. Tuesday, they kind of felt like a Monday today. Coming off the Labor Day holiday. There's LASIK. Touch from Cole. LASIK again. On the back line to Ian Hamilton. A little miscommunication there with Maggart. Good hustle again from Bethel Park. Mustang's able to regain... As Hamilton had a little chip back, allowing the Mustangs to reset defensively. You can just look at the amount of energy coming on that Bethel Park side right now. Fired up. And again, they came into this match with not a lot to cheer about so far this season. And they've turned it around in a big way here tonight. Five nothing over Laurel Highlands. 12.05 left in regulation. Georgiana letting it go. Should be a goal kick here for the Mustangs. Gonna have to thank our sponsors here on the South Union Township Sports Network, the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown, and Agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor. Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown. Dr. Calabrese, Ruth Hart, Stokes, and Hoppy. Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Fine Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Street, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza, and the Laurel Highlands Soccer Boosters. Here's Ryan Rockwell. Nice little move there around Usselman. Rockwell into the box, got knocked down. Where's the foul? Nothing called. Just a throw in here for the Mustangs. It's back to LASIK again. Off a deflection, little lob out in front of the freshman keeper, Rubicon, who makes another save. Give Luke credit. Wasn't really tested until maybe the final 30 seconds of the first half. 
Had a nice save on a Cole Radcliffe rush. Stopped Thatcher Wilson on a point blank, point blank shot. Early in the second half, there's Georgiana going down. Had a couple of other nice saves as well here in the second half. And his back line's been fabulous as well. Starters Dylan DeClaire, Caden Flanagan, Nathan Usselman, and Adam Thompson. And then some of the subs they've brought in as well just have limited the scoring opportunities. And a lot of times, whether it's soccer, whether it's hockey, you have an inexperienced keeper in there. Sometimes you get that defensive line that steps up a little bit more trying to help out the keeper. And it's certainly what Bethel Park's done here tonight against Laurel Highlands. LASIK will take this. Actually, they're going to rule this a throw-in. And we hope Harry Radcliffe's okay as well. He went down with either a ankle or shin injury. Yet to see him return, but at this juncture of the match, no reason really to have him out there. Down 5 nothing. Georgiana looking on that far side for Caleb Yanoski. Just hope you have him back for Thursday's match at Ringgold. I'm sure our Highlands head football coach, Rich Colasar, is hoping he's back here as well for Friday against Kiski area. Radcliffe, who set a school record with a 53-yard field goal in Laurel Highlands' opening football game. And that was from the field. No T, 53-yard field goal to set a new Mustang school record about a week and a half ago. Really count on him for both kicking and punting. You'd hate to lose him for Friday's game against Kiski. The Mustangs will open up conference play. A week from Friday, and Harry is back out there. Good to see with a nice little chip down on the far side for Caleb Yanoski. Yanoski into the box, a blast, and another big save from Rubicon. Boys, Rubicon standing tall. Gets congrats there from Nathan Usselman. Be another corner here for the Mustangs from the far side. I'll jog Tim Lasick down. Hamilton, who's not up this time. Staying back has been very good on these corners for the Mustangs on the receiving end. Not only this year, but in his Laurel Highlands career. So Lasik going low. The flex back out there to Yanoski trying to reset. A little chip going wide on the backside. Looking for the clear out there. It was Arpin Yurong. And got deflected out of play. It will be a goal kick here for Rubicon. And the Bethel Park Blackhawks. We approach the eight-minute mark in the second half. Douglas Fink, Bethel Park's head coach, assisted by Josh Kaczynski and Jay Zeminski. Where's Jerry Rogers, senior and junior, have done such a fine job with the Laurel Highlands boys program. Josh Nairn, the girls' head coach, Denny Marzano, Vernon Chandler was over there before the game. As well, Bill Logue, longtime Laurel Highlands trainer. Mark John and Mike Smith in the athletic department. Courtney Radcliffe taking the photos. Lindsey Greer with the stats. And John Diamond, the principal here at Laurel Highlands. 7.23 left in the second half. 5 nothing. Bethel Park leading the Mustangs. Another touch there from Timothy Jones. Mustangs win the ball back. Thatcher Wilson. Been blank so far tonight. Wilson, four goals against Uniontown. Of course, was not on the scoreboard in that 1-0 loss against Thomas Jefferson. Came back with two goals and two assists against Beth Center. Two goals against Bentworth. Ten points, eight goals, two assists coming into this match, but he's been blank so far tonight. And behind Wilson in the goal department, you have Bryce Bendishaw with three. He had all three on Saturday, two against Beth Center. One against Bentworth. Tim Lasick with four assists. And you have Courtney Weston, three goals and three assists for the Mustangs. Weston got two assists against Uniontown, two goals and an assist against Beth Center, and then a goal against Bentworth. Harry Radcliffe, two goals and two assists. And Ian Hamilton, who had that hat trick in the opening game against Uniontown, he had... Hamilton with three in that match, and then Wilson with four. The Mustangs haven't been able to buy a single goal here in the match tonight. 
All Bethel Park with under six minutes to play. Mustangs looking for a little bit of the ball and a good through ball coming here with a little bit of speed. Ryan Rockwell, edge of the box, actually blocked it down. But it'll go out of play. Good pursuit there from Rockwell as you had Luke Rubicon coming out to the top of the 18 to challenge. And the Bethel Park coaching staff has to be happy with the game Rubicon's played in the entire back line. Came in today playing a 4 4 2. Again, the Mustangs, with some of their youth, have been playing 4 3 threes here today. A little more presence up top. Started the match with Cole Radcliffe, Thatcher Wilson, and Courtney Weston on that front line. But they've juggled things up throughout the course of the evening as well. But this is really the first match other than TJ that they've struggled in the scoring department. But I think anybody that watched the TJ match last Thursday or watching here today, you can certainly say. Mustangs played a better game on Thursday than they played here tonight. 4.50 to play. Another goal kick taken there from Bethel Park off the head of Lasik. Goes in the direction of Garong. Down to Georgiana. Off a deflection, Georgiana keeping it alive. Harry Radcliffe, another touch. Low ball coming forward, broken up there by Timothy Jones and sent back down the field. Only Bethel Park player in the vicinity there was Joshua Woodman giving a token challenge to Luke Simpson. Simpson a little uh, back to midfield. Actually never got that deep in a little contact. And I have to say that was probably a dive taken there by a Bethel Park player. i rule this an actual injury timeout. The way he went down, I thought he was flopping, and now actually appears he is injured, so we hope the Bethel Park player down there is all right. I thought it initially he was just flopping and joking around manner. And that's Cody Bondra, who scored earlier on in the match, and good to see him. He's starting to sit up. I just got the wind knocked out of him, too. Good to see Bondra okay. A 3.53 left here in the second half. We're back underway. Zeminski shot broken up and then on the pass, got intercepted by Georgiana. Sent it off to Xavier Jackson on the Bethel Park side. Lasik fighting Garong, and we'll get a foul called here. Free kick for the Mustangs. Hamilton and Harry Radcliffe lining up. Harry will take it. Send it down the far side. Mustangs look for a little one-timer there. It goes across down to Courtney Weston. Tries to keep it alive. A little contract, contact here on the near boundary. Joshua Woodman trying to keep it alive. Harry Radcliffe stepping up there for the Mustangs. Juggling and coming down the near side. Good move there from Harry. Crosses out in front. No one home. And the Blackhawks clear the zone. Ruva Kaba. Actually, check that. Zine Hamilton. Hamilton pushing it forward. LASIK a touch. Sean Maggart. Harry Radcliffe turning it down the far side. Good run there. An old touch out in front from Yanoski, and it just goes and gets deflected wide with 2.34 left on a running clock. And well set up. Mustangs just couldn't capitalize. Quick corner. Deflected back in Ruva Kaba's direction with a blast just going high. You mentioned up next for Laurel Highlands trip to Ringgold on Thursday. 
Bethel Park, who was 6-8-2 and two overall last year. Go to 1-3 and three overall this year, 1-2 and two in the conference. And they'll host Albert Gallatin coming up on Thursday as well. Should have four straight games against Fayette County teams, Laurel Highlands tonight, home games against Albert Gallatin and Uniontown, and they'll travel to Connellsville next Thursday. It's Cooper Hunt looking there for Yanoski. And a whistle with 118 to play. Georgiana will take the throw in, and now another whistle. You get a yellow card issued. The late yellow. One minute, One minute remaining, remaining and a half. They're going to stop the clock here. They're going to ask to reset the clock to a minute and 20 seconds. And playing it by the books, even in a 5 nothing game. And Georgiana will take the throw in. Did we have a yellow issued? Jerry said it was coming out of the pocket. I never saw anybody come off. Nonetheless, we'll approach the one-minute mark again. Georgiana looking for Yanoski. Picked up there by Caden Flanagan. Forty-nine seconds left. Low ball, another scoop up from Rubicon. Looking for his first varsity clean sheets. He's forty seconds away from getting it tonight. It'd be good to get him the game ball. A couple that could end up going around. Gaston the brace. Bondra, Kaczynski, and Jackson also scored goals for Bethel. Thatcher Wilson trying to break up the shutout with 16 seconds left. Lost it out of play, but was poked out, so the Mustangs get one last crack at it. Quick corner with 10 seconds left. Deflected back up top. Bodied down there, partial fan from Harry. Ruva Kaba blocked again, and that'll do it. So Bethel Park improves to 1-3. and three. One and two in the conference loss drops Laurel Highlands to three and two overall and one and two in conference play. And as far as the conference standings are concerned, you throw in the tiebreaker. Bethel Park's actually ahead of Laurel Highlands in the conference. So a tough night for the Mustangs. Bethel Park wins it five to nothing. Tonight's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Breeze Line Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. Again, I'm Brian Morozak with Jerry Dupe. This has been a South Union Township Sports Network presentation. Again, your final score, Bethel Park 5, Laurel Highlands nothing. So long, everybody.